Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, and I am here with Pastor Dan Slagle, who just brought questions for God, a, a, a look at Genesis 18, mm -hmm. um, where Abraham is um, pleading with God and talking with God about Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. Uh, such a great message. Very interesting to see the top 10 questions from Google about yeah. what people would ask. God. Um, so we'll just jump right in with some questions. Sure. Um, you talk about the blessing of Abraham uh -huh. um, and you mentioned the blessing to be blessed. What, what do you mean by the blessing of Abraham? What does that include? Well, f for Abraham specifically, it included several things. N number one, there was the immediate blessing of, of becoming a father, which mm -hmm. of course, very, very important in that culture. Uh, still important today, but really uh, so back then because the son is who you passed all of your possessions along to. Uh, it also included the formation of the Israelite nation, uh, but ultimately the blessing that God was looking forward to was the arrival of Jesus, who would come through the Israelite nation and through him be a blessing to the entire world. Great. And so you pointed out that in verse 22, mm -hmm. um, the scribes had first um, couldn't believe that God would stand humble in front of Abraham. So they had transponed to it. So are there other um, transcriptions in other verses? Mm -hmm. How do we know that the scriptures that we have are true? Well, that's a good question. Uh, the answer to the first part of the question is yes. Actually, uh, Old Testament scholars have identified about 18 places, I don't have them all memorized, in the Old Testament where it is thought that scribes made uh, emendations, they are called, adjustments to the text. I don't think that in any way diminishes the reliability of the Word of God because part of God's work in producing the scriptures was not only the actual writing, but also the transmission and the superintendency of that word from age to age, century to century, millennium to millennium. When you're dealing with fallible human beings, there's going to be question. There are going to be um, differences in uh, opinion about the smaller matters, uh, such as word order, but I think with regard to the message that God wants the world to know, the Bible is infallible, and by that I mean it does not fail to do what God intends His Word to do. Even with all of the many, many hands that have been a part of the production mm -hmm. of the Scriptures, still God because he is God, is able to make sure we get the message that we need to have. Great. Okay, so sometimes when I pray, or I have found myself praying for myself versus others, there can be a bargaining component. Mm -hmm. um, if you do this, I'll do this. If you heal my child, I'll do this. Right. And we see a little bit of interaction back and forth. Right. Um, with the bargaining in our prayers, how do we focus those more on God and others? Well, I, I think Abraham is a good role model because um, there's a difference in the sort of bargaining that you were just describing and the bargaining that, that Abraham did with God. Uh, the bargaining you described is sort of a tit for tat, you know, mm -hmm. you scratch my back, me. I'll scratch yours, that sort of thing. That's not what Abraham is doing. In fact, what's happening in chapter 18 is a beautiful representation of Middle Eastern culture. Mm -hmm. uh, bargaining is a way of life. It's, it's actually a courtesy. You would not say just outright, well, do this. It's a courteous sort of thing to sort of sneak up on what it is you really want. It shows respect for the other person. The other bigger difference is though, Abraham was looking for nothing in return. Mm -hmm. This was no tit for tat, this was okay, I'm bargaining, but not for me. It's on behalf of these people that are soon to be swept away. And so I don't think God has any problem at all with us coming on behalf of others 
to plead, bargain, whatever we must do to communicate our concern for them. Mm. And insofar as knowing who to pray for and what to pray for, my, my own approach is I, I like the model of concentric circles. I, I start with the needs that are closest to me in my own house. Mm-hmm. And then my neighbors, literally, the, the fellow that lives next door to me who doesn't know Jesus. And then moving out from there into our city and our state and our country and the world. And uh, I, I find that I never run out of things to pray about. I was gonna say, it seems like yeah. when you look at our world and everything that's going on, there are so many things that you oh, endless. can pray about. Yeah. And um, it was definitely a special time today to see Faith Bridgers coming forward and it was indeed praying for the world. And um, so we thank you for that message and for sure. leading us in that. And we Absolutely. thank you for joining us for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.